and of course uh, euphemism is also used as a rhetoric device especially in literature by many of the uh, writers to lend more uh, variety and uh, more depth to the stories and uh, make it more colorful so with that uh, let us quickly move on to the table topic session so uh, let me invite a person who is serving currently as the vp education of uh, mechan communication club and uh, she is currently pursuing uh, law in bangalore institute of legal studies uh, which is uh, i mean she is in her uh, fifth year uh, ba llb she is also a kathak dancer uh, from the last 8 years and uh, still pursuing her passion in abhinava dance academy apart from her uh, passion of dancing she is also an extensive traveler and extremely passionate about, about uh, trekking and hiking uh in addition to that she is, is a multi talented person she is a swimmer a volleyball and a throwball player and uh, she has served in the roles of vp pr vp membership and xa earlier so please put your hands together to welcome toast master spurthi ragu as today's tab- table topics master Thank you, Toastmas, uh, DTM Subramaniam sir, for such a lovely introduction and good evening once again. As you all know, that thinking on your feet is one of the most important char- characteristics that you should have as a speaker. Today, I am going to help you all again, <clears throat> help you think on your feet. But today, we'll be doing it a little differently. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give all of you uh, debatable topics. where in the 2 minutes given to you you will have to speak for and against the topic for example if i say money makes you happier if this topic goes to someone you will have to speak about how money makes you happier for one minute and how money does not make you happier for the for another minute so this is going to be this is how the session is going to proceed uh, i hope it is clear to everyone if it is not i can you uh, anybody can ask me a question and i can clear this before we start the session i hope it's clear okay. thank you so bef- before further ado let's begin with our table topic session for the day my first topic will be artificial intelligence will one day become a threat to human life artificial intelligence will one day become a threat to human life this topic goes to dtm ak prabhakara madam table topic master fellow toast masters and welcome guests artificial intelligence is going to become a threat to the human beings or the society or world at large i don't think so for the simple reason the processing done by a computer is far far targeted and speedier than any human being can do and in fact most of the mundane tasks are going to be taken by, over by artificial intelligence driven computers and the society can keep on being happily playing and uh, doing swimming dancing singing all the time because their routine job is taken over by artificial intelligence and pcs are no longer required all you have to do is just give a command things will be done but is that all that is there to life only way you can live life and is that you have a worthwhile job on your hand only thing life can offer is a job worth your while just think of it a doctor like dr arundhati she has a baby delivered and what that means is happiness delivered and can that be done by artificial intelligence it it is only an enabler it's an enabler to her facilitates her uh, maybe surgery the delivery processes makes it lot more a little more let's say safer that's all for that you, you you cannot replace her and 
you take the case of any other thing where the decision is involved like whether you should take up a particular uh, hobby or not you are suited to that or not can that artificial intelligence decide you decide from your heart so artificial intelligence has no heart there is no harmony between heart and em the emotion and the heart the brain and the body there is no link it is just a kind of washed uh, sterilized intelligence and that is not going to help the human being and it can never replace the human beings in the process over to table topic master thank you dtm ak prabhakara sir that was probably how the table topic session should be it you know i mean this particular debate session should be that was the ideal way thank you sir for that amazing response on this topic the next topic is is homework helpful or harmful is homework helpful or harmful goes to toastmaster pavni good evening fellow toastmasters and table topic master is yes. homework is very helpful definitely otherwise we'll be always i mean our kids are always distracted from the studies and of course they have to do uh, playing or anything but even the studies they have to practice at home so they'll be always distracted if there is no homework i can see in all these days well their students are at home unless it is time to uh, deliver i mean whenever it is supposed to given the class only at that time they'll take the books so i think homework is definitely needed for the students uh that too it shouldn't be the same uh, you know monotonous job like looking in the book and copying it homework should have been more creative their own way of expressing whatever they learnt in the school so homework is definitely useful if they give in such a way that the students are able to do in their own way more creatively and they can understand the concepts at the same time in some schools homeworks are overburdened where the students are not uh, you know even parents are pushing most of the times about doing homework rather than making them uh, to pursue their hobbies or anything so homework should be balanced with their other uh, ways what they can learn in dancing music everything and little bit homework and more of their fun in if it's balanced it should be useful that's what my tell is thank you table topic master sprithi thank you toastmaster pavani on your take if uh, that topic was given to me i would have probably said no homework at all because the entire schooling and college i've only worried about what to do tomorrow and my homework thank you toastmaster pavani up next we'll we have um the topic unhealthy foods and beverages should be taxed at a higher rate unhealthy food and beverages should be taxed at a higher rate and this topic goes to toastmaster arundhati good evening topic master and my dear fellow toastmasters unhealthy food and beverages need to be taxed at higher level now the question is who will decide what is healthy or unhealthy food can contain high sugars high calories but when you really need some energy you have to utilize them and the pleasure our youngsters sometimes get through this food is unmatchable you just cannot gain that pleasure by your routine dosa idli fruits and vegetables the unmatched pleasure have to be they deserve at times they definitely deserve so for this pleasure can you tax them i don't agree with that the food like uh, uh, soft drinks fast food which is very uh, easy to uh, very easy to get and uh, you can utilize when you have uh, sparsity of time 
you can achieve other things. So this this type of food is also very very essential in this modern life. However, the this type of food, the damage which it causes on health, is also kept to be kept in mind. India, in India, we had malnourishment as a major problem about two decades ago. However, now obesity is also on the rise. Diabetes is on the rise. In 2000, in 1996, when I did thesis, incidence of diabetes in pregnancy was 2%. However, now it is 18%. And there is an entity called diabetes. That's a combination of diabetes and obesity, thanks to our fast food beverages, which contain a lot of fine, refined carbohydrates, a lot of sugars, less fibers, and less proteins. And the incidence of obesity is almost 30% in urban areas. Even rural areas are not far behind. It is on the rise. And overall, our health uh, in general, in all uh, levels of socioeconomic status is deteriorating because of this fast food, which is easily available, very, very attractive and very tasty. So they have to be taxed at higher level to curb, to discourage their rampant usage. Thanks and back to you. Thank you, Toastmaster Arundhati. It was not only a good take on the topic, but I, but I feel it was so much more informative too. Thank you for that. Up next, uh, the next topic would be, the next debatable topic would be, math is an important subject to learn. Math is an important subject to learn. This goes to our grammarian for the day, Sanjana, Toastmaster Sanjana H.A. Over to you. Am I audible? Thank you, uh, Table Topic Master Spoti. Math is an amazing subject. Yes, I love math. I still work with math day in and day out from counting money to counting the time when my metro will reach the office and it's amazing how simple math that I learned in school is so it's everywhere so I really love math that way but what I don't like about math it makes everything logical so this the fact that I love math has made me so objective and logical Sometimes I try to use it in situations when I'm not supposed to use it. So that has not been a very good uh, consequence of liking math and working with math. Because every time someone says, I'm, I am like, okay, express why. If this happens, that happens. And then I fi find out what's missing. So math is not that great now. But yeah, that's all I have to say. Thank you, Table Topic Masters, both. Thank you, Toastmaster Sanjana. One of the main reasons I even took up law was I could eliminate math in my syllabus. Thank you. My next topic would be water usage should be limited. Water usage should be limited. Uh, this debatable topic goes to Toastmaster Vijay Upendra. Thank you, Table Topic Master. Good evening, Toastmasters. Welcome, guests. Without water, can human race live? The question is that. Water is inevitable. At least one liter or two liter a day is very much required to human consumption so that we can lead a comfortable life. That is the plus point of water. <clears throat> and over a period of time, if you look at all greater civilizations existed because of the river, meaning thereby <clears throat> rivers play a vital role in improving the civilization because of the farming factor. Without water, farming would not have been possible. Grain would not have come our living would not have been possible. These are all the plus points when we say about water. But when it comes to the question of the present day situation, 
we have polluted every area now if we look into the area of water consumption as well as preservation the pollution is at highest level so it is right time for all of us to take care of water today in bengaluru if you look at the ground level water what really is happening 40 years back even 150 feet if you go you used to get the water today if you go to even 1000 it is difficult to get the water what are we doing are we conserving that are we wasting it or misusing it it's always a question mark that one needs to consciously answer and take care of it and preserve so that at least for the next generation we are giving something back to them thank you and back to you table topic masagadi Thank you, Tabletop. I mean, thank you. I'm sorry. Ta thank you, Toastmaster Vijay Upendra, for the great take on your topic. The next topic is pineapple doesn't belong on a pizza. Pineapple doesn't belong on a pizza. This goes to Toastmaster Shiva Prasad. Uh, thank you, Tabletop Master. First time I visible and audible. Thank you. Pineapple doesn't belong on a pizza. The debate, lifelong, uh, age-old debate that goes on more in the Western countries compared to our country. In uh, my country, you put uh, pineapple on pizza, you put watermelon, you put grapes, anything, it will work out. If you have seen uh, the recent trend on YouTube, what street food has become in this country. They are making ice cream. They are putting chili powder on top of it. They are making sandwiches, which are very spicy. On top of that, drizzle some honey. Epic, epic. So pineapple belonging on a pizza. I have never tasted pineapple on pizza. I'll be honest. I have only uh, eaten in these uh, simple restaurants uh, like Domino's or Pizza Hut. The more... Uh, prestigious, the more sophisticated pizza places I have never eaten in those spots. So I would definitely say pineapple uh, doesn't belong on a pizza for that aspect. Uh, that's it. And back to you, Table Topic Master. Thank you, Toastmaster Shiva. I agree too. I do not like pineapples on my pizza and I think it's one of the not so good combinations. The next topic would be the minimum wage for any work should be at least 1,500 rupees. The minimum wage for any work should be 1,500 rupees. This topic goes to Toastmaster Arundas. Oh. Good evening, Table Topic Masters, and uh, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you for the topic. Uh, good evening, fellow Toastmasters, again. Uh, Minimum wage, uh, see, there is a lot of, uh, already there is a lot of laws in place uh, in terms of minimum wage. And, uh, so there are certain limits which is prescribed under various uh, various forums. So, so obviously, so it has to be increased because if you look at the cost of living, it had the inflation, the, you know, the debate which is going currently and the market also impacted big time is the inflation. Uh, so it is affecting everybody. It is not just the rich or uh, the high class. It is affecting everyone. Uh, and also, if you look at uh, the tax which is charged by the government, and again, it is never uh, it is never increased. It is it is it is the tax that remains the same irrespective of the inflation or other factors which is affecting the life. Uh, but there, there there is no increase uh, in the remuneration or the tax bracket. So the life of uh, uh, you know, uh, the daily uh, wage earners are actually at trouble always. So it is it is high time people should look at increasing the minimum wage. And also, also we should look at uh, the other aspects of it. Uh, I, because I have seen my clients struggling with that, especially when you have labor unions and uh, other challenges at the place. Uh, there is a lot of uh, demand which comes, uh, especially when we have, uh, you know, factory workers and all that. Uh, so especially when you when you the moment you touch this area we should also be conscious of the fact uh, you know what is going to be the demand from the workers uh, while we say minimum wage is fixed at this level and you know the expectation of workers or uh, 
you know, the people who are on the role, they may also have the you know expectation that you know it has to be at you know much higher than the minimum level which is prescribed by the, the authorities. Uh, that's it. I'm back. Back to the uh, topic first. Thank you, Toastmaster Arundas. I do agree uh, to a few points that you said, especially after COVID, there have been a huge chunk of people that have been affected adversely. Um, up next, the topic would be, should the legal drinking age be lowered or should it go up? Should the legal drinking age be lowered or raised? And this topic goes to our Toastmaster of the day, DTM Subramanian. Thank you, Toastmaster uh, Spurti, for this uh, interesting topic. Uh, I think uh, presently looking at uh, the legal drinking age uh, for adults, uh, am I correct if I say it's 18? 21. Thank you. Uh, at first, I would say that uh, uh, if uh, we assume that uh, general public at large are responsible and committed enough to take their own decisions and still we have a lot of actions happening due to uh, people getting drunk and uh, then uh, not having a commitment but still they go on to drive their own vehicles due to which actions keep on happening. So I think uh, while this may not have directly anything to do with the legal drinking age but still for the fact that uh, uh, at the age of 21 they are not mature enough to take uh, their own decisions and still not stop at driving uh, after drinking i think definitely i would say you uh, increase the age of uh, legally drinking to more than 21. however i think if you looking if you're looking it from another aspect if you increase the drinking uh, legal drinking age, it also affects the revenue which is collected by the government due to uh, sale of uh, beverages or alcoholic drinks. So I would say it will also affect the en enormous revenue being generated by the government. So I think you need to have a balance between uh, uh, the legal drinking age as well as maybe uh, you uh, channelize or have a control over the sales channel where you uh, sell the drinks and uh, that is something uh, which uh, the go the authorities need to consider well the fact that a uh, lot of people uh, drink for their own reasons so i think i would leave it to the judgment of uh, but, uh, government authorities thank you thank you dtm subramaniam for such an interesting take on the topic um our next topic would be schools should offer healthier food choices food schools should offer healthier food choices goes to our guest mokshit yeah hi uh, can you could you repeat the topic food should be schools should offer healthier food choices Okay, uh, the 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 top of the mind. Uh, I guess uh, the uh, the statement makes it uh, that yeah, food school should offer a, uh, healthy choices because uh, you think there is there's no doubt about it. Healthy choices, uh, healthy food will lead to a, a healthy body for the children, and which uh, is the development age, and that in turn will affect them in the in the longer run of life. So uh, it, there is a strong point. Uh, there is no doubt that a full, uh, school should have an healthy, <clears throat> healthy choice uh, of food for the people. Uh, but uh, the second aspect where uh, this this is an ideal world where if you have a good community, I mean, when you're uh, if you're an ideal world, that would be your uh, a dream goal to have the good healthy food uh, across all the schools. But when you come to, when you come into real uh, realism, healthy food are costly, so uh, that's an aspect. Though you uh, so dreaming that the health uh, that school should provide healthy food could be a, a little towards idealism, uh, in the sense that uh, you need to also see the finance part of it. A, a healthy food 
uh, uh, costs uh, costs a lot, uh, and uh, and they're typical uh, typically perishable. So they uh, in uh, in totality the uh, to manage them is a little uh, is better is 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 costly than the other uh, 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 junk food. So, so yeah, that's all. Uh, I guess those are the for and against points. Thank you. Thank you, Mokshit, for such an interesting take on the topic. Um, so members, with that, I end today's table topic session. Um, and I hope it was a fun-filled session. And I also got very interesting takes on every topic from all your members and it was a lot of fun with that i end my table topic session and hand over the charge back to the toastmaster of the day dtm subramanian thank you toastmaster uh, spurti for such an energetic and uh, interesting uh, table topic session yes i think most of the speakers uh, had a very interesting and witty responses uh, for the table topics uh, given to them and uh, can we have a big round of applause for Toastmaster Spurti for such an energetic session. With this, with this uh, uh, let us take a quick uh, bio break for 5 minutes and let us uh, return uh, quickly at uh, 7.54. Now it is 7.49 on my clock. Let us quickly return uh, in 5 minutes.
small uh, announcement by our VP education that uh, she wants to share, uh, share with us that uh, ballots are getting ready uh, to be shared in the chat window. So let us wait for a couple more minutes. So I think uh, we can continue with uh, more usage of uh, euphemism in a different contexts with the different types of euphemism. Uh, before uh, we invite the general evaluator, uh, first we have uh, politeness euphemism wherein uh, instead of uh, being impolite to uh, our fellow uh, members or anyone whom we are interacting with, as much as possible we try to avoid uh, disturbing something what is known as or what is considered as a social taboo. So which is why we try to use uh, euphemism to mitigate the severity of a situation. For example, any situation which is uh, embarrassing or anything which is hurtful, in a way we can mitigate the uh, embarrassment or a social taboo by using uh, euphemism to indicate the specific uh, situation. And uh, as much as possible, I think uh, being polite uh, by using euphemism is considered as uh, uh, indication of uh, good manners and uh, it makes all parties uh, involved in the conversation more comfortable. And uh, of course, uh, uh, most of the times uh, just to avoid getting into trouble, we always uh, be uh, want to be in a diplomatic situation wherein especially in a situation with uh, negotiate where we are doing uh, negotiation or when someone is anxious or in terms of uh, strategic thinking for example uh, if uh, any of us have been uh, in the process of getting interviewed by a company for a job uh, most of the times uh, we have uh, enough, we have experienced enough number of times. Uh, directly if we uh, try to contact HR, they say, instead of saying that uh, uh, we have not been selected, they always say we'll get back to you, we'll get back to you, without uh, finally indicating uh, what is the time frame by which uh, they'll give us a final decision. I think it has been my personal experience and I hope that uh, some of you would have faced a similar kind of uh, situation, especially when it comes to interacting with HR. And uh, this is also true, especially in uh, uh, political situations as well, wherein as much as leaders, uh, instead of creating some controversial statements, uh, they always try to mitigate the risk and be diplomatic by uh, being cautious with the usage of words. and. Uh, Instead of directly categorically saying something, they would say we are looking at the situation and we'll arrive at the decision at a suitable time when we cross the bridge. So these are some of the different types of euphemism. So with that, uh, uh, let me invite our uh, general evaluator who has completed his become and he is also doing uh, his American CPA and uh, he's one of the most active members uh, uh, from Mekan who is always ready to pitch in as a volunteer when we have uh, uh, demo meetings or maybe as a contest role taker or even any meeting role taker in uh, any of the clubs uh, which may or which are in need of any roles. So with that uh, Please put your hands together to welcome Toastmaster Shiva Prasad as general evaluator for today's meeting. Thank you so much, uh, Toastmaster of the day, DTM Subramaniam, for that uh, flattering introduction. I should I should say. Uh, with that, let me uh, straight away start off into the general evaluation. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say something about the theme that was uh, picked for today. 
uh, yesterday we received the uh, agenda of the meeting by mail and i opened the mail i scrolled uh, scrolled uh, down and i saw the word euphemism and i said to myself uh, nice word of the day i don't think anyone will use it and two seconds later i realized that is the theme for the meeting and i honestly honestly i wondered what will the sergeant at arms what will the president and the master of ceremonies himself say about it and i must say that they have done a fantabulous job uh, regarding speaking about that theme uh, so the business session uh, started off at 6:35 pm uh, we VP Education uh, told us about the roles that were taken up for the next meeting. One speech slot, one evaluate, uh, one evaluation slot was taken up, and uh, the president told us about the winners from Mekon Communication Club. Uh, table topics and evaluation won by Toastmaster Supreet in the Division C contest, uh, and Toastmaster Balaji was the runner-up in that uh, international speech contest in the same contest. then we had uh, uh, two members elected from mekon communication club uh, dtm subramaniam himself who is here as the club growth director for district 121 and dtm mudanka as the division c director then uh, she handed the charge to the sergeant at arms the sergeant at arms started speaking at 6:39 pm uh, and as uh, as i was confused about the theme she also ex- expressed her confusion about the theme she started off about something about the bangalore weather and uh, her audio audio and video was in, uh, unclear so we could not make out much of what she did uh, the just the few perils of an online meeting and all i have to say about uh, the sergeant toastmaster vaishnavi is she is already a good speaker she just needs a good internet connection and that's about it the president took over and the minutes of the meeting were read, uh, read out by our secretary toastmaster bhavani as usual uh, no flaws she went on smooth precise and without any hiccups for that uh, we can give toastmaster bhavani a huge round of applause then the guest uh, guest was introduced uh, clearly by the president and later on the president started her address and she went on qu- quoting a few examples about euphemisms Uh, such as economical, petite, curvy, under the weather, and being between jobs, and the best possible way that uh, you can ex- explain about the theme for today's meeting. She, and then she went on to introduce. Even though her speech was short and sweet, she went on to introduce the master of ceremonies in a creative manner by using a few few euph- euphemisms in that introduction. so it was not just a regular introduction and the president as usual gave a great address even though it was a short address for that let us give the president a huge round of applause uh coming to the master of ceremonies i will keep you uh, keep it for the end of, towards the end of my evaluation uh coming to the next thing we had the first speech the only speech for today uh, by, given by toastmaster uh, sanjana and she her speech has been evaluated by toastmaster arun das uh, i'd like to ask you if you have received the evaluation guidelines and resources in advance yes mr toastmaster shiva sure. have received that yes sir. please yes. proceed with your evaluation Good evening, fellow Toastmasters. Again, uh, and the Toastmaster Sanjana in particular. Uh, this is my first uh, individual evaluation, so excuse uh, if there is there is any flaw. Uh, while uh, okay, so to start with, uh, you stood up and spoke while uh, this is an online meeting, so that's something which I still get. And you've shared your own uh, uh, personal story with your teacher, so that again uh, connected well with your audience. and it was a lucid uh, flow and you conveyed your story really well uh, and uh, you were maintaining the eye contact though it was an online online meeting you were uh, looking at the camera throughout throughout your speech uh, you were you were maintaining the eye contact and one area correct me if i'm wrong uh, i felt as per the project guidelines uh, you should share your story as a protege or a mentor uh, not very sure you probably crossed that aspect 
and uh, I've attempted many uh, speech of yours, uh, and uh, just from from that, you know, you know, my expectation in terms of the body language or vocal variety was on the higher side. Uh, there, probably that is one area you could uh, challenge yourself and you know work upon. Uh, that's all from my side, and back to the general evaluator. Uh, thank you, Toastmaster Arundas, for that evaluation. A very short, uh, concise evaluation, I must say. Uh, you. Uh, you could have highlighted a few more strong points uh, in the speech is what I felt. You know, uh, she spoke about her mentors and all those certain things. So you could have given a few more strong points. Uh, apart from that, you highlighted she was, you know, she gave it in a standing position and all those other things. So it was a good evaluation. Let us give a big round of applause for the evaluator and the speaker. Uh, with that, the ballots have been sent out. I'd like, I'd like to request all of you to vote for the only, only for the best table topic speaker for now. Uh, we can keep the rest for the later. Okay, so coming to the ballots, I had uh, one thing to point out. You know, uh, I I have noticed that all these days, whenever as soon as the ballot is sent out, uh, four or five members, uh, you know who you are, uh, immediately cast votes for all the categories and they submit the entire ballot even before the roll takers have done their duties. Uh, the timer, our counter, they have strived through the entire meeting. And you have already decided who is the best before they've given their report. So please do not do that. Please stay patient and submit the entire ballot uh, towards the end of the meeting. With that, uh, let us uh, get to the TAPG team reports for the day. First, I'd like to call upon our timer Toastmaster Arundhati to give your report. Good evening, uh, Mr. General Evaluator, my dear fellow Toastmasters and guests. I would like to share this screen. Hope you are able to see my screen. This is the report for today. Despite uh, technical glitches and unexpected challenges, we could almost uh, keep up our time, uh, keep up our target, I should say. Uh, today's business session took about 2 minutes 45 seconds. Sajit at arms, 3 minutes 30 seconds. I think about 10 to 15 percent was uh, because of technical glitches. Minutes of meeting, two minutes, 25 seconds. President address, six minutes, 42 seconds. TMOD took about 20 minutes, 25 seconds. First speech by Toastmaster Sanjana was five minutes, 46 seconds. Table topic session was altogether 25 minutes, 25 seconds. Evaluation was for one minute. And uh, so far, general evaluation is for six minutes, 25 seconds. And um, Uh, this is the report of uh, table topics. You can very well see almost all speakers were well within time limit, except the very few outliers, DTM AK Prabhakara, Toastmaster Arundhati, and uh, Toastmaster uh, DTM Subramaniam exceeded the time limit of uh, two minutes. And I would like to apologize here for, uh, for the first two speakers. I couldn't show the green yellow card because of some technical glitches. This is all my report and uh, thanks and uh, back to toast, uh, back to back to the general evaluator. Thank you, Toastmaster Arundhati, for that detailed timers report. You made use of the best resources that you had, uh, an Excel file. You put, made even charts in that, and you have, the effort that you put in was clearly visible. You even highlighted uh, which speaker exceeded the time, which speaker was a little short. And for that effort that she has put in, let us give Toastmaster Arundhati a huge round of applause. Uh, next, we have our R counter and PP evaluator, Toastmaster Vijay Upendra. 
good evening general evaluators good evening toastmasters welcome guests <coughs> with reference to our counter uh, to start with ankita four hours and uh, D dtm subramanyam seven hours and then bhavani was uh, sorry dtm subramanyam seven hours and uh, three er and he used to in between ya yeah, a word which i really don't know what really he wants to convey and uh, two times he repeated second section that's the one thing and bhavani flawless tm sanjana two hours and repeated how how two times and spurti two hours dtm prabhakara two hours sorry i lost uh, the power here can we wait okay and then pavani flawless arundhati one hour sanjana one hour and arundhas one and then shiv prasad till now four hours and uh, arundhas he repeated uh, it it twice and when when you two times and uh, coming to ppe <coughs> speakers did not talk on sex religion and politics and uh, some members did not keep video on that needs to be corrected and uh, there were some technical disturbances that could have been avoided to try a trial run or something like that before the meeting and uh, this all the observation that i made and report thank you and back to you g of the day proceed thank you toast master uh, vijay upendra for that our counter report uh, probably if possible you could have made uh, an excel file because this is an online meeting if uh, that would have been done maybe it would be more convenient for us to uh, make note of the our counts crutch words used by all the speakers and coming to your pp evaluation uh, it was precise perfect uh, there were a couple of disturbances during the meeting uh, loss of internet connection the meeting ended at certain point but uh, it went it continued and uh, thank you for that report let's give toastmaster vijay upendra a round of applause for his efforts uh, coming to the last uh, minor role taker for today the grammarian toastmaster sanjana h a thank you for uh, reinforcing my name as h a so this is my report i'll probably present my screen just a minute first of all i'm glad that i was a grammarian today because uh, i had a lot of uh, good quotes and usages with all the euphemisms that can last this year for me so i'll start with the good ones that i liked get on your nerves petite embarking embarking on self discovery under the weather troubled waters left a bitter after taste concept oblivious to collateral damages thinking on your feet to curb rampant usage euphemism to mitigate embarrassment get back to you is a euphemism that you can use if uh, in uh, you know when you're like uh, applying for a job and that's the euphemism people generally use perils of online meeting and being between jobs these were the ones that i liked and coming to the improper usages or the suggestions that i have handheld during required times can probably used as handheld during tough times and instead of doing swimming it could be to swim and the word of the day uh, two of the toastmasters have used the word of the day lucid and tm sanjana prabanjan used it to explain how uh, bhavani ma'am helped her create a lucid picture or clear picture and tm arun das uh, used lucid to explain the flow of sanjana's speech so with that i am done with my report over to you general evaluator thank you toastmaster sanjana for that extremely extremely detailed report uh, i have seen in the last meeting you were a debutant a counter there also you were sincere your report was meticulous detailed similarly even today you have you know even while explaining your role in the beginning of the meeting you created a slide powerpoint slide to explain the word of the day and its meaning uh, 
for that effort and even now you have created an excel file you have listed down everything meticulously for that effort uh, for our debutant grammarian let us give her a huge round of applause right we are done uh, with the tapchi report let me now go go on to evaluate the next role taker which was uh, the table topic master toastmaster spurti uh, toastmaster spurti you had a nice intro about table topics which is required you know for the sake of the guests what table topics is about you explained that clearly uh, your topics were creative you know you asked us to speak for and against the topics so that was creatively done uh, and you selected the speakers in the manner in which they should be started off with non role takers and then the minor role takers then the major role takers uh, because of lack of uh, members present in the meet uh, coming to a few points where uh, maybe you could have improved the there was no powerpoint presentation probably it could have been made and uh, it would be even more clearer for the members to uh, make note of the topics and just uh, one of the topics the artificial intelligence topics i think i have seen it uh, two or three times in mecon communication club itself uh, i think we can do away with the artificial intelligence for now uh, that's it uh, with that you have done a great job the speakers most importantly the speakers were able to speak uh, come through throughout the prescribed time so that is what you have achieved and for that let us give the table topic master a big round of applause finally coming to the star of the day the master of ceremonies uh, dtm subramanyam uh, i was you know when i saw the theme for today i had honestly i had to google it and when i googled it there came a definition on google in that definition there was a word innocuous i had to google innocuous as well doing all that i have come to this meeting and the amount of euphemisms you have thrown at us used in the course of this meeting i have lost count how many euphemisms you have given us uh, first of all you started off your uh, uh, address speaking about thermochemical cleaning of metallic parts you know you went to one of your friends house and his wife said he was washing the utensils funny story and grabbed all of our attention that is exactly what the master of ceremony should do keep the members engaged and grab their attention keep keep their attention uh, some of the uh, euphemisms that you used vertically challenged bitter after taste and one that i particularly liked in the middle of your address the meeting went boom uh, we had to relog in we had to restart the meeting and even then we came back the meeting had ended and you used a euphemism to describe that you said technical issues so i think that was extremely creative of you coming to the history of toastmasters which you have to give as a master of ceremonies i think uh, you could have linked it somehow considering you have linked everything to euphemism today you could have linked that also somehow to toastmasters i have no idea how but somehow uh, you i think you missed out on uh, telling us about the number of members number of clubs uh, number of countries in which toastmasters is present uh, one thing i particularly liked about your role uh, is that you introduced even the minor role takers which i have not seen any uh, master of ceremonies doing you took the pain of uh, getting their intros and introducing them uh, next and one point where i would uh, suggest is that the meeting had already been uh, delayed so we were running ahead of time running short of time and you kept on giving examples of euphemisms even after the first speaker spoke uh, there were a few examples that you give probably i i felt that part could have been avoided uh, you know speaking uh, between uh, the role takers after they spoke and then you again give examples of euphemisms uh, you could have cut short it in view of the time the length with which the meeting was going uh, apart from that one point uh, i have nothing more to say you did you conducted the meeting in a fantabulous manner and for our master of ceremonies let us give a thunderous round of applause with that i conclude my general evaluation and hand the charge back to the master of ceremonies dtm subramanyam thank you for your uh, 
generous and encouraging and positive feedback toastmaster shiva i think most of us uh, uh, we have noted down our uh, good performance and also some of the improvements uh, which we can implement in our performance when we talk take up the role for the uh, next time thank you very much toastmaster shiva and uh, your team uh, can we have a round of applause for uh, uh, general evaluator and his team with that uh, of course uh, i cannot do with the uh, occupation hazard of being a tm body i cannot stop myself from uh, sharing one or two examples uh, of how uh, euphemism is used please allow me uh, only a minute or two before hand it over formally to the president so some of the usages of uh, euphemism in a sentence is if a car is not but uh, as a fresh car it's used uh, and uh, it is butter as a, uh, from a second owner the car is certified pre owned he did not break up with her he needed more space she is not a liar she is just creative with the truth so these are some of the examples i hope you liked them so with that uh, thank you for uh, being a very uh, encouraging and uh, interactive audience thank you very much and uh, over to you toastmaster rankita thank you a distinguished toastmaster subramanyam for uh, even bringing this topic on the table and take, giving us so much so much to take back from today's meeting uh, firstly i'm sorry i won't be able to turn on my video because i'm also working alongside so please excuse me for that uh, but nevertheless i did witness the entire meeting today and uh, i think it was a great meeting we had great quality speakers and role takers today and uh, i think uh, it was also apt for the use of euphemism because we first had a delay and then we uh, we had a meeting suddenly ending because of technical glitches uh, which subramanyam sir very beautifully uh, kind of you know gave a uh, euphemism the 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 what it means and covered it up by using humor and uh, making it more mild uh, nevertheless i apologize for all the technical issues that we have encountered and will definitely ensure that these issues do not occur again in future uh, so um, i thank all the role takers for being part of today's meeting i think shiva it was your debutant role as the ge today right if i'm not wrong uh, shiva okay i i'm not sure if it's in the meeting uh, sorry shiva i couldn't hear you yes it was my debut great 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 job done and even the accountant sanjana i think she it was her first time taking up the role uh, thank you so much uh, for putting up uh, the best your best foot forward and also i'm sure all the members of the club also feel the same and if you do feel the same i request you all to please log into base camp right now and give them your valuable feedback it will only motivate members to show up more often take up roles and enhance their communication skills also go a step forward and give them a notification on whatsapp telling them that you have given your feedback so that they can go there and check and feel motivated and encouraged um also tomorrow a meeting link will be shared which will be a recording of the entire session so if you want to enlighten yourself on how you can use euphemism i think subramanyam sir has given us a profuse number of examples today uh, you all can revisit the meeting and definitely enhance your english and euphemism skills uh, uh with that i'm going to come to the most awaited part of today's meeting that is the results um so the best speaker and the best evaluator will definitely go to um sanjana and her evaluator arundas considering we had only one speaker and one evaluator so congratulations to the both of them for taking up the role and doing a very good job at uh, at putting it for putting it forward in front of us the best tab g role taker in the timer accounter pp evaluator and the main category goes to um, atosma sanjana uh ha who was a debutant account uh, accounter for the day great job done sanjana i hope to see you coming in our meetings and taking up more and more roles and becoming a great toastmaster and communicator as you proceed in this journey uh 
and the best major role taker in the mc time uh, ttm and the ge category goes to again a debutant role taker toast master shiva uh, who kind of aces and shines in every role that he takes up congratulations toast master shiva for doing a great job for giving us those insights and for using euphemism in the right fashion to uh, also deliver your uh, ge report in the best way possible thank you so much everyone for coming for the meeting today before i close the meeting today i would just like to uh, make one more clarification uh, the international speech contest that's conducted so only the first place winner uh, goes forward and represents the club at the next level so just in case this came out wrong Uh, Toastmaster Supreet will be representing us at the district level for the table topic and the gen and the evaluation contest, whereas Toastmaster Balaji, who won the first runner-up, and hence he will not be uh, going forward to the district level. So uh, that's what it is. Oh, and I made another <laughs> mistake today. I have not announced the best table topic speaker. Uh, let me quickly do that. uh okay this goes to um i don't no brownie points for guessing this goes to distinguished toastmaster ak prabhakara uh congratulations uh, dtm ak prabhakara for that table topic response and again i profusely apologize for uh the mistake thank you so much everyone for being a part of today's meeting i hope you all enjoyed the meeting and learned a lot from the theme and the various examples of the theme thank you all see you next week Good night and goodbye. Take care. Ankita, can we just wait for a picture? Sure, sure, sure. Mm. I'll be taking a picture in three, two, and one. Mm. One second. Mm. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know. That's the end of meeting number one one six three. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank Shiva, you. Shiva is gone. Yeah, Shiva, I would like to have a word with you. I'll call you.